Hey everybody, I'm Henry Gordon Smith, founder and CEO of Agriculture, and I travel all around the world visiting the most state-of-the-art greenhouses and vertical farms. And today I'm at Little Leaf Farms in McAdoo, Pennsylvania, and I'm here to speak to the CEO of Little Leaf Farms, Paul Salou. Paul, how are you doing? Great. Thank you for coming, Henry. I'm so excited to be here because I got to see your other facility in Massachusetts, but now I get to see your new, bigger, and improved facility. But before we get into that, can you give us a bit of background? Who are you and how did you get here? Well, we, believe it or not, are going to have our 10-year anniversary this summer. So we're not even 10 years old as a company. Uh, but I tell you, I mean, it's been amazing, the, the growth and the success we've had in the marketplace and our customers and the consumers that buy our product. Very, very grateful. Yeah, it's the local lettuce that the locals love. I think that's what the phrase is. Anyway, I might have gotten it a little bit off, but we're seeing it everywhere. I mean, I was in New York. I'm seeing the packaged products, new salad mixes everywhere. So it's really exciting. But can you tell us a little bit more about some of the developments? Like how has the company grown and what is the impact of the company so far? Well, when we got started 10 years ago, really baby leaf hydroponics was not really established in North America. And for that matter, it wasn't really established in Europe either. So this is relatively new. Uh, and, you know, we have we were one of the early ones. And we we believe we took the best technologies from around the world and integrated it into our state-of-the-art systems. Here in McAdoo, as compared to our Devons Mass facility, we're yielding upwards of 20% more. So part of what we've been doing is learning on each successive build. And I think one of the keys to our success is that we approach growth from an incremental, very measured standpoint. We never got involved with this land grab and overextending ourselves geographically. We have been building a greenhouse per year now for like 10 years. And so I think that has allowed us to learn, incorporate those lessons learned in the next greenhouse in a continuous learning cycle. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think there's a lot of going big too soon in CEA. But speaking of big, which we've arrived at now, can you tell us a bit about the facility that we're looking at right now? Well, um, from my knowledge of Western Europe and North America, this is the largest baby leaf hydroponic system within those regions. Uh, so from that standpoint, we grow many, many millions of pounds a year here. Uh, we started uh, building this facility and brought it online in 22. This is called 4A, 4B was brought on in 23, 4C was brought on in 24, and then 4D is being brought on in 25. So each of these facilities are about 10 acres. Um, they, From our understanding, the highest yielding and highest quality uh, greenhouses of these types in the world. And, uh, and you know, the, the market demand has been there. And so long as the demand is there, we're going to continue to build. And there's a lot of talk about, you know, big facilities, but then there's the real need to sort of disrupt the norm, right? We've got all these leafy greens coming from California, Arizona, you know, the talking points, but disrupting that in a real way requires scale, which you've achieved now. One of the reasons why I drove out here and traveled here to see this is to learn more about that. And one of the things I like about you is you share some metrics about that impact, how many stores you're in or how much you're disrupting. Can you share some of that data with us today? Like how many leafy green, you know, you mentioned the millions of pounds, but what percentage of that, of CEA or of overall leafy greens is that? Are you making a dent? Well, um, I'm happy to say that uh, I think we are. R right now, we're the fifth largest brand uh, of packaged salad in the United States. Uh, I think this year we'll end up being the fourth largest as we continue to grow. Uh, within the just the CEA category, we're approaching 55% of all CEA leafy greens that are produced in, in North America. So. Um, so, yeah, we've had some tremendous growth and we're in like 8,000 uh, grocery stores now. We're shipping uh, about 53% of the U.S. population. Uh, and it's really all about the product, right? And people have enjoyed eating our lettuce. <laughs> and so long as they enjoy eating it, we're going to grow more. Yeah, they're demanding it. You're producing it. And that's those are real numbers. I mean, that's great, great impact already. So you talked a little bit about incremental growth. Obviously, you come from a growing background already yourself before this. But can you tell us a little bit more, like, what is your secret? I mean, there's been so many failures in both large-scale greenhouses and vertical farms, especially in North America. So tell us a little bit more again, like, what's your secret? What's your secret to success? Well, the, the greenhouse industry, the greenhouse business has been around for decades and decades. 
So this notion of what's happened in the last 10 years in mostly the United States and a little bit in Western Europe, that really is not representative of the industry that is already here, right? Which, you know, has a multi-decade track record of success, right? In tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, eggplants, now strawberries. So I think we then saw what was successful in those other greenhouse crops, tried to apply some of those lessons to leafy greens. It's very, very different production system, but unlike other approaches, I mean, we're a believer in the sun. I mean, you can see here, we're in a, a cold February day in McAdoo, Pennsylvania, and you know our greenhouse is nice and warm, and we're feeling that, that solar radiation from the sun. So uh, we have just incorporated a lot of the common sense principles that were already in place, and you combine that with a farming mentality and great day-to-day -day execution, and you can deliver on delivering the customer a great, great product quality that they'll enjoy eating. Yeah, I think that's really important, that focus on the farming itself, the farming operations, and the sort of consumer obsession that you have to have this great product for them. So you're about 10 years in now. What are the next 10 years like? Are you going to have some new products, new facilities, I assume? Can you give us a vision of the future for Little Leaf? Well, I mean, I was earlier in in greenhouse tomatoes. And, you know, 30, 40 years ago, it was majority field tomatoes. Now it's majority greenhouse tomatoes. We'll see what happens with leafy greens. Uh, it's more and more difficult to deal with outdoor farming in general. Not enough rain, too much rain, impact of climate. Uh, ability to get labor, et cetera. So I think, uh, you know, I'm optimistic about the future. So long as we stay focused on delivering a great quality product, uh, our customers are enjoying eating our product. And as I said, we'll, we'll grow more. Very, very exciting. Thank you so much for your time, Paul. If you want to learn more about Little Leaf Farms, you can check them out on social media or their website. Definitely try their range of products that you can buy at all kinds of stores. If you love local food that's clean and local and fresh, they're the ones for you. And also check out their website if you're interested in working at an exciting company that's impact-driven like Little Leaf Farms. Thanks for watching.